Greetings everyone, welcome. So I'm recording this video for both of my English 102 courses in the summer or in the spring semester of 2020 <coughs> as we are going through the coronavirus um, closure of a school. So this video is filmed for both my in-person class that's based off of medicine, medicine and, and literature. It's also for my online course, which is for horror literature. So, um, what I'm going to be explaining in this video is just a basic overview of the big research pro pro project that's coming up. <coughs> Excuse me. So, let's just get straight to it. <coughs> so... The thing that we're going to be mostly working on across the month of April. We still, in both classes, we still have a little bit more reading to do. In uh, the lit medical class, we got two books left. <coughs> in the uh, horror literature class, I think we still got Dracula left. So, um, but the main project in the course is you're going to be writing. A persuasive argument about one of these books that we've read this semester. So go back, think back to some of the debates that we've had across uh, about these texts. So whichever text interested you the most, that's probably what you should think about writing about. So let's just take, for instance, Frankenstein. Frankenstein was a text that was read in both courses. So with Frankenstein, there's lots of themes that we talked about throughout the text. So you might talk about, uh, I don't know, the relationship between sex and death. Or you might talk about the medical ethics issues within Frankenstein, right? You know, should Victor have not created another monster? Or should Victor have created another monster for to make a companion for the one he already made? All right, so all these uh, all these major questions of uh, and debates about these texts, and you know, that's what you're going to be doing mostly. This is honing in, focusing on one specific debate. You're going to be writing a sort of extended research paper about it. The research paper is the main thing that you need to accomplish in English 102. You have to be able to you know, write a research paper by the time you're done with this course. You know, depending on your English 101 course, you might have done so. you might have done a research paper, but this time we're definitely slowing it down. We're taking it step by step to make sure you're doing it right. So, you're going to be writing a persuasive argument about one of the texts. So, one that interests you. And then, I say the goal is to take one of the main theories of reading literature. Remember, we talked about this at the beginning of the semester. So, you might have psychoanalysis. You might have feminist criticism of literature. You might have historical criticism of literature. Class Marxist criticism of literature, especially in the medical class, the gender and class stuff have come up. You know, but you're going to take a certain slant and read the text in a certain way, right? Depending on which one of these sort of schools of literary criticism you want to adopt for your own here. So maybe you're writing about McTeague. Right, you might ask yourself, well, you know, was McTeague justified and or was McTeague a victim of fate? Right? You, know, you can do that do it that way. Maybe you might write about the uh, Lovecraft and the other class in the same way, right? You know, uh, do these characters have any hope in a world so so bit so dismal? So you're gonna investigate a problem and debate from one of these readings. So basically, the steps that you're going to take across this, think about it 
think about it in terms of a question first, right? So, so you don't want to just say, I'm going to write about um, McTeague. You, know, you might, you, you want to frame it as a question, right? So should, would McTeague have went down his path of no return if it wasn't for his losing his medical license? He, you know, would Frankenstein's creature have been happy if Victor would have created another monster for him? So you have to kind of ask the question like it's a subjective question, right? There's no right or wrong answer to those questions. You know, you're going to be arguing that one way of looking at things is better than the other, but it's not an objective question, right? You're not, you're not asking what's the price of tea in China. You're asking a subjective question that's up for opinion and debate. And you're going to be using one of these schools of thought to make your, make your case. The first thing, step you're going to do in the project is writing an annotated bibliography. So if you don't know what an annotated bibliography is, I'll show you an example in a second. The examples on this handout. <clears throat> but an annotated bibliography is basically when you start looking up sources, you know, from the databases. I'm going to be filming some videos for you on how to actually find sources from the databases. You know, the, unfortunately, at Southern, we only have access to a, f a select few um, literary data databases. So this might, you know, the actual research part might be something that I have to help you with with because of my library accesses elsewhere. You know, so, but I'm going to be asking you to find several articles you know, about the texts. Basically what an annotated bibliography is, you're going to summarize the article and you're going to cite the article correctly. So you're going to show me that you've read a wide range of, of scholarship about one of these books that we've read. That's the purpose of the bibliography. And then the actual paper, once we get to that, you have to show how your argument engages with the larger scholarly conversation. Well, you'll know. So maybe let's take Frankenstein, right? What have previous critics said about uh, creating another monster? Well, you want to show in the paper then how your argument responds to the others that have been previously argued. Or maybe you would say something like, this hasn't been argued about in the past in whatever we've been reading. So that's basically what an annotated bibliography is. You're going to find about seven or eight sources somewhere in there in a, in a couple of weeks. And you're going to... Um, basically sum up what the articles say. You're going to read through the articles on your own time, and you're going to sum them up. And you're going to be finding them on professional databases. You know, the, in this class, we're past the point of Google sources, for the most part. Now, you might actually be able to find some Google articles on Google Scholar, most of the stuff you're going to need is from the, the professional critics, since this is a, a literature course. You're also going to write a proposal. The propose, that goes with the annotated bibliography. The proposal is where you actually pitch your topic idea to me. Right? So, um, you're basically going to say, I hope, in this paper, I hope to argue that Frankenstein's monster you know, was uh, deserved a companion, right? And then you're going to sort of lay out your reasons for why. So the proposal is going to be about a page, right? You're going to explain what it is that you actually hope to argue in the paper, what it is you hope to prove and claim. <clears throat> and you're going to attach it with your bibliography to show that you've been reading stuff. So that's the first part of, uh, of the paper. We're going to talk more about it in the next couple of weeks. You know, this video is mostly just getting you to think about what's ahead. Okay, so, but this won't be actually due until around the end of April. So this, this is looking to be about a month away. But right now, 
if you ask if you ask yourself, well, what is a text that we've read that you sort of gravitated to? Well, you can automat you can already maybe start thinking about what it is you might want to write about, what it is you might want to research. And then uh, after the proposal and bibliography, you're going to be writing a paper, right? Where you're so it's going to be a thesis-driven argument where you prove one side or the other of whatever it is you're talking about. Remember, in literature class, the text is your main anchor. Like you always sort of have to ground whatever claim it is you're arguing in the text. So you have to provide lots of proof from the book, from passages within the book, to support your arguments. So I'm going to be asking for a bit of an extended length paper here. You know, usually the standard for a literature paper, you know, in a course like this, is about six to eight pages. So you got to sort of lay out the claim it is you're wanting to make. You have to uh, you know, show have sort of a literature review section in the paper where you talk about what previous scholars have argued and then you kind of have to lay out your own claims using specific evidence from the books and that's actually the first the way that I'm going to be doing this you know in, in all these you know in both 102 courses you have a short paper assignment so the second and last short paper assignment is actually going to be a draft, the first draft of your paper, right? And that's going to be due the 4th of May. And then, um, fix my own typo here. You know, and then a week after that, and then during that week, you're going to be doing an extensive peer review on Blackboard. So you guys are going to be giving each other good feedback, criticizing each other, all that good stuff. Then the actual final draft of the paper for the end of the term will be due Monday, the May the 11th. So combined together, you know, I'm pretty combined together. This is worth a pretty substantial portion of your grade. I need to double check this percentage before I actually post this video, but it's worth somewhere between 50 to 60 percent of your overall grade between the bibliography part and the paper. I think I make the bibliography part about 10% of that overall total. And then maybe you might as well say add another 10% because the second short paper, instead of making you write an unrelated paper, it's going to be a draft of, of your final paper that you're going to do early. So you're going to be doing, <coughs> excuse me, so all in all you're going to write, write a one page abstract explaining what it is you're going to do. You're going to have an annotated bibliography of a certain number of sources. Like I said, uh, I'm going to film some videos explaining each assignment more thoroughly than this. If this is just to get you going. And then, of course, the actual paper by the end. And on this uh, handout, if you look below, you know, I've taught a course before on horror films. And I posted somebody's proposal and bibliography here. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen the film The Babadook on, from uh, Netflix, but this person explains like what she was hoping to achieve with her argument about The Babadook. Then she gives a bibliography. This is what an annotated bibliography looks like. You have a citation, right? A citation in MLA style, and then you explain what it is the art the article was about, what arguments were made in the article. You'll do that for however many number of sources I tell you to do. I haven't figured that out yet, you know, but maybe I would say seven or eight. If I say seven or eight, you needed to have seven or eight citations about different perspectives on your book that it is that you're choosing to research. So hopefully that wasn't too alarming, right? You know, the, you know, I will be, we'll have this whole month of April coming up. We only have so much reading left. So I will actually 
I will make some videos to kind of walk you through baby steps of each different paper. All right, so this video is just a, a warm up. So, um, you know, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I look forward to meeting with the in person class on Zoom. The six of you who are in the online class, well, I might as well say the five of you, one person kind of fell off. The five of you who are in the online course, you guys always know to ask me anytime about anything that's going on. So, uh, good luck out there, guys. Be safe. Stay home in this pandemic. We will see you guys next time.